December 1st is World AIDS Day, and as part of a social action project for one of my classes, I am creating a series of YouTube videos covering social issues related to HIV and AIDS that will be uploaded throughout the week. These are meant to be informative and clear up many misconceptions about the disease, but I also want them to serve as a call to action for people to educate others about HIV and AIDS and donate to help find a cure. I personally suggest the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, and I'll put a link in the description. In this video, I cover the history of HIV and AIDS. The two main strains of HIV, HIV-1 and HIV-2, are genetically similar to various simian immunodeficiency viruses, or SIVs, that occur in Old World monkeys, particularly in Africa. Using molecular clock analyses, two groups of HIV-1, M and O, probably crossed from apes into humans around the beginning of the 20th century, while the N and P groups seem to have come about more recently. The exact circumstances are not known, but exposure to the blood or bodily fluids of infected apes occurs most often in the context of bushmeat hunting, giving us a likely scenario. The origins of HIV-2 are likely similar, though the virus has largely been restricted to West Africa and hasn't had anywhere near the effects seen from HIV-1. The earliest confirmed case of HIV infection in humans was an anonymous man from the Belgian Congo. Upon testing of a preserved blood sample from 1959, it was determined that the man had been infected with a virus very similar to modern-day HIV-1. A preserved lymph node from a biopsy of a woman, also from the Belgian Congo taken in 1960, later tested positive for HIV-1. However, the sample from 1960 was genetically different enough from the sample from 1959 for researchers to conclude the most recent common ancestor of the two viruses occurred in the early 1900s, giving further evidence to the idea that HIV had been around long before it was first recognized as a pandemic. In 1968, a 15-year-old black male entered a St. Louis hospital with a plethora of strange illnesses. When he died the following year, an autopsy confirms he had widespread Kaposi's sarcoma, which is today recognized as an AIDS-defining illness. Preserved tissues were tested in 1987, and it was determined he had been infected with a virus similar or identical to HIV-1. Since he had never been out of the country, nor had a blood transfusion, the male, identified as Robert R., proudly contracted the disease through sexual contacts, meaning that HIV was already present in the United States in the 1960s. A Norwegian sailor who had visited Africa began showing symptoms of various illnesses in the late 1960s, as did his wife and youngest daughter. All three of them died between 1975 and 1976, and later analysis of preserved tissues showed that all three of them were HIV positive. Later testing of 75 blood samples taken from Ugandan children between 1972 and 1973 showed that 50 of them had HIV antibodies present in their blood. HIV appears to have spread from Africa to Haiti in the mid-1960s, and then a single person from Haiti likely brought the virus to the United States. The official beginning of the AIDS epidemic is usually given as June 5, 1981, when the CDC reported unusual clusters of pneumocytis pneumonia, or PCP, in five homosexual men in Los Angeles. Many more cases of PCP and Kaposi's sarcoma began showing up all across the country, though primarily in gay communities in New York and Los Angeles. The belief that the disease associated with these symptoms targeted gay men resulted in the initial name GRID, or Gay-Related Immune Deficiency. However, by August of 1982, the disease was referred to by its lasting name, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, or AIDS. Initially, two separate viruses, LAV and HTLV3, were identified in patients, but they were later found to be the same virus, and they were given the name HIV, or Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Millions of people have been infected with HIV and have later died from AIDS-related illnesses. The effects are not just medical, but also social and economic. I'll be exploring these issues throughout the week. If you are able, I encourage you to donate to the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative or another AIDS-related charity of your choice. Let me know if you do so I can keep a running total. In the next video, I'll address social stigmas related to HIV and AIDS.